name is Jameson Gem, Regional Manager with Vortec Industries, and this is a quick training guide on the Power Boss Nautilus. Before operating your machine, there are a few things that we do want to check on a daily basis. These side skirts are extremely important. They prevent water from spilling out of the side on turns. So we want to make sure that there's no rips, tears in your side squeegees. There's one on both sides of the machine. As well as same thing with the rear squeegee. Visual inspection very quickly. Make sure there's no rips or tears or anything obvious. If you have a large tear, rip, or something got caught in the rear squeegee, your vacuum performance is gonna be extremely hindered and you're gonna be leaving water all over your facility. Another thing to note, when getting on and off the machine, make sure that the machine is in the off position and not running and use your pedal, st your step here. That way you don't step on the pedal getting up. If the machine happened to be on, it will move backward. There is no seat safety switch. To begin operating the machine, you must first fill it with water. To do so, you have to lift up the solution tank Put the hose in and turn on the water. Make sure that you put in the soap after you fill up the tank. It should be the last thing that goes in, that way you don't get suds coming out of the tank. After filling water, you are now ready to operate your machine. First things first, you want to turn the machine on to the start position. Um, controls over here, you have your horn. You have three different mode selectors on your speed. So there's an idle mode, there's a turtle mode, and rabbit mode. Rabbit is 99% of the time. Turtle mode is just for transport. If you're actually operating the scrubbing functions of the machine, you do wanna be in rabbit. Moving over to this side of the panel, we have a headlight on and off. Um, we have your brush pressure settings on this first dial, water settings on the second dial. Brush pressure, 90% of facilities, we're gonna to wanna to just be on brush pressure setting one. If you have a spill, hydraulic fluid, something that you need to actually scrub a little bit harder, settings two or three, um, you do not want to leave it set on settings two or three for everyday scrubbing. Likewise with water, water setting one should be good enough for majority of, of warehousing facilities. If you do have extra buildup, you can run more water, which entail will have you know more soap and stuff flowing through the machine. Moving up to the panel up top here, your green selector is your do all switch. So First here, you have your scrubber and water, your vacuum, and then this is your master on and off. Uh, what I would recommend is that I actually leave your switch, your master switch on at all times, and I actually use these buttons to control the separate functions. The reason I do that is because if we're scrubbing and we're going down the aisle and we're ready to stop scrubbing, I will shut off my vac, or excuse me, my scrubbers before I shut off the vacuum. The reason we do that is so that we don't leave water all over the aisle. And then about 15 seconds later, or 30 feet, we'll shut off our vacuum and then continue to park the machine. Pedal operation of the machine. So starting, we do have your forward and reverse on one pedal. So push forward to go forward. Reverse is actually pushing down on the same exact pedal. So you just need to be careful. Parking brake feature is very important that you operate this correctly. Operating the machine with the parking brake on can damage components. To apply the parking brake, you want to press both pedals at the same time. That depresses the parking brake, making the machine not able to be moved. Now, if you were to drive around with the parking brake on, it does overheat your drive motor and can create problems. To get the, the parking brake off, all you have to do is depress the one pedal and it will automatically lift up. So after a day of cleaning, the rear tank is now full. We have two access points into the rear tank here. One on the right, one on the left. They go into the same tank, so there's no, it, it doesn't matter which one of these you open. Three hoses on the back. So this is actually your vacuum hose. This is what's coming up from the floor into the dirty water tank. If you do happen to get a clog in your machine, this pulls off here extremely easy. You can also detach it from the rear squeegee there. This is your dirty water drain, so this is what we're going to be draining out pretty much every day that you run the machine. Clean water drain, you don't need to drain the clean water every day if you don't happen to use the full tank. I would recommend draining if it's going to sit for more than two weeks, three weeks. It does tend to start to smell after a little while. So if you do end up having the machine sit, I would drain the clean water after a little while. Um, the other main, so what we're going to do is, is we drain out here, if you have a lot of sediment in your tank, so if you've been scrubbing in an extremely dirty environment, a lot of times a lot of dirt is going to build up on the bottom of the tank here. The Nautilus has an excellent feature that you're able to actually open up this main drain here, 
This allows you access into the bottom of the tank. There is a seal and gasket, so make sure when you put it back on, the seal is facing the tank, otherwise this is gonna leak here. Uh, this is just a twist, and it, you do not over tighten, it's just hand tight. If you over tighten it with tools, you can actually crack the seal and cause it to leak. Another neat feature on the Nautilus is this step that helps you clean out your dirty water tank, it gives you easier access. So just put the pin in, you can step up and have much easier access into the tank. So draining the machine is extremely easy. If we remove this, we have to turn this brass fitting. And once that's turned, you pull the plug out and down to the ground. Be careful, this is gravity fed. So as soon as you lower this down to the ground, the water's gonna start to come out. So don't soak yourself. One of the big benefits of your Nautilus machine is that it offers a wet sweep function. Um, what we need to do though, is we need to clean that out every day of operation. It's not something that you wanna let sit in there, otherwise the sediment builds up and it's much tougher to get out. This machine, instead of pulling the trays out from the middle, like other manufacturers, this has an extremely easy way to open up the back here. We have a latch, which is right down here. We're gonna lift up, lift up the rear squeegee. The debris trays are underneath the machine, and by pulling on this orange handle here, the entire tray will come out. This is where all the debris and sediment is going to be from the day. And you can lift these bins out, take them right to a garbage can, dump them out. And if you do have a spray hose available, it is nice to clean this out daily. After you've cleaned out your trays, you put them back in like so. This actually slides right back underneath the machine. And all we have to do here is get it lined up so that when this door shuts, it'll actually push the trays back up to where they go. So I just set it right there. You don't need to go crazy. You do have a safety latch here. So this is, this is actually quite heavy so that this doesn't fall down while you're reaching down under there. What you do is we're gonna lift up on the squeegee, depress the safety latch, and you shut the door, and everything is back together. So one of the big benefits of this tilt-up squeegee assembly is that cleaning the squeegee is much easier, swapping your squeegee blades. Instead of having to remove the squeegee off of the machine, everything's right here. With this being a propane machine, when you do get the low LP indicator warning, it is time to change out the tank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this door here first. We can see our propane tank here. You do have to lift the seat up and forward. What I like to do is I will actually run the machine after so I'll shut my propane tank. I will turn the machine on. It'll run for about 10 to 15 seconds to clear out all the propane in the line. Once that is done, the machine is gonna die on its own. The reason is, is that if you disconnect this before you do that, propane is going to shoot out of there. It can actually burn your hand. Um, so now, after running the machine, there will be no propane left in the line. You can safely detach your hose here, put your new propane tank on, just like a fork truck, and then you're, you're good to go.